Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is the final edition of City Talk. After nearly 16 years, I'm giving up the mic. Joining me is one of my favorite guests, controller Tom DiNapoli. By the way, he signs my check. No, there's no connection. <laughs> Tom is here to talk politics, Trump and the possible impact on New York City and state, the state budget, the softening of local government revenue, New York City's finances and public authorities, and more, all in a half hour. Welcome back, Mr. Controller. Thank you. Great to be back. You're absolutely one of my favorite guests, so I, I... you know, close with that. It, it's been great to do your show, and, and all New Yorkers have really benefited from the dialogue that you've encouraged, and uh, I've benefited from it. You're, you're a challenging interviewer, but uh, you bring out the best in your guests. Ooh, so. <laughs> thank you, sir. Okay, let's start with Trump. Yeah. I mean, the tabs, you know, said it all. Trump versus New York is the New York Post, and screw York City. I mean... The the possible negative consequences of this administration on the city and state is is enormous. The the economic impact of repealing Obamacare, the targeted punitive actions for us being a a sanctuary Sanctuary city, city. Mm -hmm. climate change, immigration, the list goes on and on. And the only positive seems to be, you know, infrastructure spending. So talk about the negative impacts. Well, there's a lot there, and a lot of it is um, very uncertain at this point, right? Because we, we, we know what the, uh, the, uh, the rhetoric is, uh, but we don't know what the actual implementation will be. Right? Anything. So you, you start with uh, the Affordable Care Act, so-called Obamacare. You know, the big slogan was, you know, re- we're going to repeal it. First thing we do, repeal it. Then it became repeal and replace. Well, replace with what? Right. You know, we don't know. Right. And and you could see a scenario where they might repeal it, but it won't take effect for a while because the congressional Republicans, I'm sure, are very concerned about, you know, it's great to have the slogan. And then when real people get thrown off of health insurance, suddenly they've got to run, you know, next year yeah. and they'll they'll suffer the consequences. Yeah, reality of versus rhetoric. You know, from a state perspective, we we did an analysis. And if you look at the totality of 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 the health care federal health care dollars you know uh, tied to the affordable care act it could be as much as a loss of 5.7 billion dollars to the state so that that would create a huge hole now again if you replace it could be a lot less than that but right. who knows and, right so, and if you phase it in right the so, impacts are you know. you know so at this point in the governor's budget proposal for the coming year and similar to what what the mayor has as far as the city uh, they don't assume anything because nobody knows what it'll be. So, if if there is an early implementation of some of this uh, rollback, it could have a very very negative consequence, not just in terms of the human dynamic, which is key. Yeah. Right? People losing health insurance, but in terms of the finances of, of of the city and the state. You know, people don't realize with, with all the criticisms about uh, the Affordable Care Act, New York State benefited in terms of the dollars yep. that came in. Yep. You know, the different programs, Medicaid and so on. And we are very dependent on, on those on those federal supports. So, so that area, you know, alone, just on health care, uh, potentially devastating consequences. Yeah, I mean, uh, anywhere from nothing to well, not 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 yeah, nothing. Probably wouldn't be nothing. Yeah, five point seven well, billion dollars. Well, and then you also have the other strategy for the congressional Republicans, which has always been to to take. Uh, a lot of those health care programs would make them block grants yeah. instead, and which w- the purpose of block grants, it always sounds good to be more efficient. It's really to take money away. Of course. Of and, course. and again, New York being a key uh, point of leverage of, 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 of Medicaid and Medicare dollars, if you block grant that stuff, it, it really is going to hurt New York more than other states. Okay. And then, okay, so we yep. move from the impacts of Obamacare, right. possibly. Right. Five point seven no, billion. No, no upside, only downside. We just don't know how much and when. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, now you have the target of punitive punishment right. for sanctuary, sanctuary cities. cities. Yeah. 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 It could well. be as much as seven billion dollars. 
Yeah, well, for the city, it, uh, it could even be a little higher. It's about 10% of the city's budget. And again, you don't know what will be the menu. I mean, some of those dollars, you know, are Homeland Security related. I can't imagine they would punish the city and the state, you know, on Homeland Security. But who knows? I mean, you just don't know how far they're going to take it. And you see, you know, whether it's from the governor or the mayor or, or really all elected officials in New York, you know, we, we celebrate New York being the gateway uh, for immigrants, has been forever, for our family, oh. for everybody else's, you know. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, spontaneous uh, grassroots response that we've seen in, in face of the executive order, the uh, folks showing up at the airports, I mean, nothing organized, just really spontaneous. Uh, it's, 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 it's chaos. I mean, the yeah. lack of planning, the lack of foresight, the right. lack of direction yeah. in the administration is absolutely astounding. Well, they don't consult their own, you know, experts in the federal government as to what the implications are. Right. So you have, you know, sick people that are stranded or college professors, you know, that suddenly can't come. Students, you know, CUNY students. You go down the long list. I mean, it's just, there's an absurdity. And of course, you know, New York has always been the foundation of, of our commu definition of community is, has been the immigrant population. Right. Over, you know, 4.4 immigrants statewide, 22% of the state population, even higher in the city, 37%. Yep. Yep. Who's fueling the economy? Who's, who's filling so many of the jobs? If, without the energy and the entrepreneurship of, of, of immigrants, where would we be? Yeah, I mean, in your November uh, report, role of immigrants in the New York City economy, I mean, they... 37% of the population, as you said, $275 billion dollars in economic, economic activity, yep, right. 43% of the workforce. Yeah. You just look at the statistics, yeah. Yeah. and then what they do is they reinvigorate the gene pool. Yeah. And they, they make us a younger population. Japan, yeah. for example, is an old population, yeah. and they're, they're, they're yeah. screwed yeah. in 10 years. Well, but let's look at it from another perspective. Um, political clout. You know, New York, as we know, when they do the census, and before you know we'll be doing another one, right. it's hard to believe, but we've been losing out to other states because of population growth that's smaller than other states. Right. But what has been, what's really helped maintain, is we talk about New York City, but you go outside of New York City, yep. some of these older communities upstate, yep. it's been the influx of immigrants that have kept their populations up. So in terms of political power that that comes from population if we didn't have the influx of, oh. of immigrants coming to new york we would be even further behind than we are already oh, i mean we'd, we'd have net loss of population i mean because yep. we have a net migration right. gain right so and so that's it's another unknown it's another unknown it's another unknown yeah yeah and but you know i think at some point they're gonna have to step back how punitive can they really be when you have all of these cities in fact i think even more cities want to be defined as sanctuary cities now in response to all of this and i do hope you know look the president is a new yorker let's hope he keeps in mind some of that new york experience i don't know well i you know he's playing to a certain audience now the audience that put him in in those swing states and those in those few key places but you know when i the, the one thing i don't think americans want to see you know the word that you used before chaos yeah if, if it looks like the changes are so disruptive and that we all start to spin out of control uh even folks in this base are going to start to say wait a minute this is not really what we bargained for we wanted to send a message we wanted you to shake things up but but don't go too far and but we haven't seen that yet the, well, the, the support's no. still there but it's yeah. it's 10 days into the presidency but it seems like it's two years. But, but yeah, well, but the troubling, you know, uh, you and I were talking before we started the show, you know, f I think many people were hoping that the inaugural address was going to have some balance or some mm. opening or unity. It was the same It was, it was more like the campaign speech, and that was a disappointment, so, to say the least. And um, presidential leadership by, by tweeting, maybe it's the modern era, but it's not exactly what you can, one would well i mean you, that 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 way you can ensure that you have your base listening yeah. and nobody else yeah. so you can talk to your base yeah. i'm on uh, twitter and i get i get his tweets daily and i'm sure they're directed right to you oh that, <laughs> it, and, and it affects me i mean he knows what he's doing okay cuomo what's up with the governor what power grabs corruption 
Well, some, some of that's not necessarily um, new in terms of trying to expand executive authority through the budget process. We've seen that before. Uh, he's got a proposal in, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, the budget plan that's before us that would say if we lose federal dollars, his budget director could unilaterally uh, decrease local assistance. Yeah, but that, that I mean, that's, that's expanding an already powerful yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Cutting out the legislature. Yeah, so I think you get back to that issue of, of, of lack of checks and balance, lack of uh, accountability, and, and ultimately lack of transparency. So, you know, that's certainly a, a proposal that, that we would flag as one that the legislature should um, probably uh, ask many questions about and, and probably uh, ensure that it's uh, changed uh, from, from how it's currently proposed. But, you know, this has been a trend we've seen yeah. uh, in terms of the powers of the controller's office. has been talked about a great deal. Uh, I think we've talked about it on your show in yeah. the past, where our ability to, to uh, review contracts, SUNY and CUNY construction contracts, yep. OGS, Office of General Services, centralized contract, big multi-billion dollar contracts, we were cut out. And I think some of what created the environment where folks thought they could get away with bid rigging and lining their own pockets had to do with the fact that there hasn't been the right kind of oversight and checks and balance. So, you know, we have a procurement reform proposal. We'd like to see the oversight that, that was taken away from us restored. Uh, expanded in some areas. I'd like to see, you know, they've, they've used these nonprofit entities that they've set up. Yep. And that's how, you know, some of this money for the economic development programs was funneled. Completely opaque, no transparency, no accountability, no review from the controller or anybody else, really. Uh, and that's where you ran into trouble. So I would like to see uh, an elimination of the use of those nonprofit entities. Unless they're if they're set up, you know, to the to the core SUNY CUNY mission of higher ed, that's one thing. But to be set up really as a shell to just funnel money so nobody could look, we got to stop that because we saw how it, it, it went off the it went off the rails. What 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 is the odds of the legislature actually doing what you you are suggesting? Well, you know, are you I, lobbying them? We, well, we, we we have submitted a specific proposal, and and I'll, um, I'll I can tell you this when. You know, when uh, he made some other proposals, you know, with the uh, inspector generals. Uh, right. Grant Sullivan, and, right. Inclu including for, for CUNY and SUNY. Uh, many legislators called and, and said, you know, well, we'd like to go in a different direction. We'd like to see your office. Also having a chief procurement officer, which would do a lot of what we do already yeah. anyway. Uh, so we haven't really had to lobby the legislature. Many of them already very interested in supporting our proposals. Many of the good government groups also have been interested in our proposals. You know, look, the, 2016 ended with a very contentious uh, relationship between the governor and the legislature. Uh, and a lot of talk about the pay raise right. issue. That's a piece of it. But, but it's, it's, not, not it's not the only, it's not the the only thing. Bit. It certainly was a piece of it, or the lack thereof. Uh, I think the legislature, I don't think it's a bad thing, uh, are asking more questions than they have in the past. And that's, that's the way government is set up to be a balance and, and co-equal branches. And, and, you know, in New York, to begin with, as you know, you, you study state government, New York has one of the strongest executives yep, yep. of any state. Yep. And, Except and, for New Jersey, possibly the strongest yeah. governor. And, and, and so, so you have constitutionally a very strong office of governor, and then you have a personality, and give the governor credit, he's strong and he's done some very good yes. things w with his leadership. Uh, and, and, and you have a legislature that's been willing to, to cede a lot of that uh, influence. And then you've also got still a, uh, a very uh, delicate situation in the Senate, right? You got That's more what Democrats right, and Republicans, right. but but you've got the Simka Felder sits with the Republicans. You've got the IDC, which is growing. Eight you know, members. Uh, you know, so uh, so that and in some ways that that has in the past I think weakened weakened the legislative role. But but look, keep in mind this: you've got now Carl Hasty and John Flanagan. Speaker of the Assembly and the Senate Majority, they're they're coming into their own. They're not brand new right, anymore. Right. Right. And and John Flanagan gave a speech uh, on the first day of session. It was very strong and a very strong right. uh, statement of the independent role of the Senate. And I think part of it was uh, the Senate Majority. Many people thought they were going to be voted out and the Republicans were going to lose the majority, and they held on to it yet I again. No. In I, including in districts. But it's all local. But it, including in districts where the governor unlike what he had done in the past, actually campaigned yep. for some Democrats. Yep. So I, th I think, you know, the Republicans in the Senate feel somewhat emboldened by the fact that they're still there and they've got a strength in the lines with, with the Independent Democratic Conference and, and, and with Senator Felder. And, and, and certainly in the Assembly, uh, on, on an ideological basis, you have many people that, that have disagreements with the governor. So, you know, look, yeah. what, I, what I hope is it'll be a thoughtful discussion. Uh, folks were not happy. 
that the governor didn't do the traditional state of the state. Well, that, that's what I want to get into. Yeah. I mean, he goes through this six-city tour, right. and he proposes, you know, 35 uh, policies right. in a 300-page book. Right. It, it, was, it was both a New York state election yeah. document, yeah. but it was also a national political document. Yes, yeah. Well, and, and I, I went to the first one here in the city, and I actually thought it was one of his better presentations. Oh. And, 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 I, and I said that to him. I, 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 thought that, uh, I, I thought that he very effectively laid out his, his agenda for the state, whether you agree with every piece of it or right. not, and, and certainly spoke to the angst that many New Yorkers feel about what's happening at the national level and making very clear that New York was going to continue to chart a progressive path. Yes. I thought, I thought it was actually very effective. You know, the, the negative of it, by, by totally bypassing the opportunity to present directly to the legislature, it, it just created a bad taste. Uh, yeah, among I mean, so, it, it exacerbated you know, look, an already you know, look, uh, tenuous situation. Albany, like, like a lot of places, it's still at the end of the day a bunch of human beings that have to work together. So relationships matter. And certainly, you know, they've been bruised, in, you know, over the past couple of months. But the governor is very talented, and, 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 and uh, you know, I, th I think he's been, in other ways, you know, he's had the uh, various, uh, maybe all the conferences over to the mansion for some discussion. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I know that if he wants to get his agenda done, he's going to have to uh, find some common ground with the legislators, and I'm sure that'll happen. It's always, there's always a dance that goes yeah, on as we But I, I, it seems to me that he's setting the stage for a more contentious session. Well, I think, I think, first of all, what, one of the challenges is we, we, we're still in pretty good shape as a state financially and budget-wise, but, but it's very clear that between the spending commitments and some of the tax cuts that are being proposed and the economy still moving in the right direction but some softness, yep. not as much money yep. around. Yep. It's always harder in a budget cycle. We don't have as much money to, to keep all everybody happy. Plus, there's no state elections this year, so right. Right, there's, there's that, that, right. that pressure. Right, Or right. to have people come together and behave. Uh, and I do think, as we said, you, know, you, ha you have legislative uh, majorities that are, that are bolded. But look, just take the tax issue, right? So the governor wants to um, keep the state on a good fiscal path, wants to do some new things, more money for education and some other new programs. Uh, and to balance the budget, he's suggested extending the surcharge that we now have yep. on higher-earning higher New Yorkers. Uh, to, to help get us through that. If, you, if you're going to have the numbers add up, you, you're obviously going to need some more yeah. revenue. At the same time, you know, middle class tax cuts, you've got all these moving parts. Well, what did the Senate say out of the box? No, we, are, we, we don't want to see any extension of that tax on higher income New Yorkers is, is a new tax. We're opposed to new taxes. What does the Assembly say? You should extend it and you should add more on right, top of it. Right. So, in effect, you've already got three different positions. Right, you know, the right. The governor's saying extend, the assembly's saying extend and add, and the Senate's saying no extension, you know, we, we need to cut all the taxes. So, how that's all going to add up, you know, in some ways it's, it, it's some, of, some of the traditional, you know, positions that, you, you know, you saw maybe years ago uh, when, when the Senate was solidly Republican and the assembly solidly Democratic. Uh, they're going to have to mediate that. And, and also you have the, the, the variable of the immense possible negative impact of the Trump actions. Exactly right. I mean, you're talking, you know, $12 billion? Could be I a mean, lot. Could be a lot. Could be and, a and, lot. And the one, the one positive thing that we didn't touch on, of course, and again, timing. I don't know that it would happen anytime soon. The administration has been talking about money for infrastructure. Now, right. we're in all states. See, that's the, that's that's the, the trade one, of, yeah. right. But, you know, look, the federal government has its own deficit problem. How is he going to pay for it? And, 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 debt. And, and debt or is he going to say privatize your, your assets? He's going to do both. Yeah, and that's the problem. I think from a New York perspective, there's always been a great resistance, and I think appropriately so, that w these are pub public assets. Yep. And, you know, to start selling our bridges and our tunnels and our water systems off to private entities or to lease them, and you know, for 99 years, you know, it, sometimes it sounds good, but in the long run, uh, you, you really lose the control of, of, of what should purely be public assets. Okay, so, let them, so, well, so anyway, my, my point is that, you know, that, that, that's maybe the one positive area that, that we don't, but, but all these unknowns and, and all these different philosophical positions are, are gonna make, I think you're right, it's gonna, it's gonna be a more difficult budget process. I hope we don't have a late budget, but this may be the year that, 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 that some of those, um, Differences create that kind of gridlock. I don't want to see yeah. that, and it, and it shouldn't. But because um, you have to do pencils down and get things done, 
but but there is you know somewhat of an undercurrent that to your point that this is going to be a tougher year than yeah. we've had in a long time. And and, and talking about uh, strange things besides the six city tour, he didn't give a budget address to the legislature and the public. So what what was that all about? I mean, it, he's just doing things in a different way. It's you know. I mean, this, but he called there's got to be a strategic reason why he's doing well, it. You know, he, I, as I said, he's been meeting. He's been meeting with groups of legislators to to make the presentation that way. Obviously, the documents were available online. You know, there wasn't as much of a heads up uh, even for our office as we would have expected. But you know, it's hey, it's a brave new world, 2017. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the fiscal state of the city briefly and the fiscal state of the state. Yeah, all, given that we've got this huge unknown right, out right, there. Right, 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 right. City. Well, I mean, look, the city continues to benefit from from a strong economy. Uh, you know, certainly relative to the rest of our state. I mean, the city is is doing the best of any region of the state, growing jobs. You know, again, revenue is perhaps not coming in as strong as first anticipated, but the city's also benefited from the fact that they've built up reserves. And, yep. You know, they're in strong shape that way. So, so they're projecting a you know a a budget balance and out year gaps. I think averaging about two billion dollars, which is very very manageable. You know, so again, barring a, a shock wave in terms of uh, an economic downturn, I think the city is in pretty good shape. Similar for the state, and uh, you know, uh, the, the mid-year uh, update on the budget, they lowered projections for revenue yep. because they were falling way short of, of what had been first projected when the budget was, was done, you know, last April 1st. So, you know, one of the, because the state's fiscal year still goes till March 31st uh, of, of the calendar year, Wall Street doing better, I yeah. hate to say at the Trump yep. rally, yep. good for our pension yep. fund, uh, yep. but it also may mean that we haven't done the numbers yet for the end of 2016, but Wall Street probably had a, a, a better year profit-wise than we're first projected. What about jobs? Uh, well, it's it's interesting. We, we Part of how I think profits have been kept up at Wall Street is that you certainly go back to the global financial crisis. They were downsizing. They started hiring again a couple yeah. of years ago. Early this year, some firms were, were trimming their sales a bit. We initially projected over the summer probably a modest increase in jobs, but probably oh. not too much. Uh, but we'll see. We don't have the numbers yet. But uh, bonuses, which we thought might be down, maybe they'll be up now if it's been that good a year. So that will result in more revenue coming to the city and the state. You know, and as we've talked about before on the show, the, 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 the taxes generated from securities industry counts for close to 18% of yep. the revenue. So, yep. so whether you love Wall Street or you hate it, when they make money, that's what gives us the money to spend on all these other programs. So, so I, I think actually this last quarter of the state's fiscal year, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll get a bounce out of what's been happening on Wall Street that will benefit everybody. And, 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 and in fact, de Blasio has done a relatively good job with the, managing the economy. Well, look, I mean, look, I mean, it, 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 you know, some you, of it's timing, you fall right? Into you come it, in, right. right? You know, in the same way Trump, the Trump rally, how much of that really is because of what Obama right. presided over, right? right? right. So, uh, so, yes, but, but the bottom line is in terms of uh, collective bargaining, you know, the Bloomberg administration <laughs> just kind of kicked but that they, off. Oh, come didn't on. They settle any I contracts mean, with anybody. No, but th you know, so 300,000 so, contracts? So, 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 so some folks criticized the blow. Oh, it's too generous. Well, but... But at least you know how much money you need to yep, spend, yep, right? And yep. there's some agreements, you know, for some savings on health care, whether they've come in as strong as, as projected. But at least he's been moving in the right direction that way, building up reserves. They have a, uh, when, they, when they saw that there was some softness in revenue, they came up with, with a savings plan, uh, you know, which was a smart strategy. So, yeah, I think from a, from a fiscal stewardship point of view, I, I give the mayor and his team good marks. As long as this economy stays in relatively strong condition, the city... Clearly, of, of all uh, the municipalities in our state, benefits the most. Yeah, I mean, a new review of the financial plan of the city of New York was was pretty yeah. solid, yeah. given yeah. the unknowns. Given the unknowns. Okay, absolutely. let's uh, let's close with one of your favorite subjects. What's that? Public authorities. Yes. So, let me give you some numbers, taken from you. Ninety-six percent of all state-funded debt. $267 billion in total debt, $13,487 for every resident, two-year-old, 90-year-old in the state, and 166,000 employees with a payroll of $11 billion. The shadow, the shadow government, as we call it. it it's, yeah. it's more than a shadow. Yeah. It's the body. Yeah. 
Yeah, and 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 often providing important services, but without the kind of of accountability and transparency that there should be. And while we've made some progress and reforms, we need to do more. You know, you mentioned debt at the outset. You know that that ninety six percent. You know what. <laughs> What really happens is that, as opposed to the old days where voters would approve debt, which right. is what anticipated on the state constitution, instead we do this backdoor borrowing through the, the, the public authorities. And now, too, we do, in effect, backdoor spending, you know, spending that, that's yep. really off budget. Yep. Yep. Or, or authorities are used, you know, New York Power Authority, you know, we see money coming in to help the state's, you know, uh, general fund, money that perhaps if it stayed at, at the Power Authority can help reduce utility rates, right. you know. And, and it becomes part of that shell game. And again, because it's, 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 it's not really transparent to people. The average person has no clue. Uh, and the press may report on some of it, but it doesn't really change, you know, the dynamics. And it so, augments the power of the governor. Yeah, well, it also, and it also makes it easier, you know, when you're, when you're putting, you know, the, the budget together, when you, when, you, when you push some of this off to, you know, to an authority to, to in a sense... Um, in uh, diminish how much is actually being spent. So you could be fiscally conservative or maybe not, yes. not so much yes. if you didn't have the yes. benefit of the authorities. Yes. So you know, what's the right balance? You, know, you, you, you think of the MTA. We, we desperately need those services, right? You have to have them. And, um, and the uh, capital. And the capital plan. But, but a little more independence in terms of how the board members should operate, um, you know, more transparency in terms of reporting, more review of contracts from our office. Uh, it, I, I'd like to see the authorities move more closely to the kind of reviews that we do for state agencies. Uh, you know, they were set up to be more efficient, but, you know, to be more efficient and to diminish the accountability, I think that's where we get ourselves into trouble, you know, from a financial point of view and, and sometimes from a corruption point of view, as we've seen. So I'd like to see more transparency, whether we're talking about SUNY, you know, or we're talking about uh, MTA, uh, Thruway Authority, you go down the long list. Yeah. Um, and we've called for that. We have proposals out there, as you know. Um, we always hope that the legislature will be supportive of some of those. In, in, in the last couple of moments, you're optimistic? Well, you know, I'm always optimistic. I wouldn't be in government all these years if I wasn't. Uh, I, I, I'm concerned because, like, like most folks in the state, I was taken by surprise by the turn of events on November 8th. I, I really, you know, thought we were going to have a Hillary Clinton presidency that was going to be great for New York and, and, and uh, great for the nation. And we have to get used to this new reality. I think it's going to mean that the role of the states becomes even more important. Yep. Uh, so I'm glad I'm in state service, you know, uh, because and I, you're going to stay in state I'm gonna service. I'm going to stay in, in state service, and happily so. And we may have to pick up the slack uh, where the feds may may pull back, and and we want New York to continue to be a beacon of hope and 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 showing the rest of the nation how to do it right. And uh, I'm glad to be at the table to be part of. Uh, the resistance where appropriate and part of the progressive action where also appropriate. And I'm thankful for your presence as well. My only regret is that I won't be doing City Talk again. Ah. And you have just been a gem for all of us in New York. You're like one of our important resources. Oh, and and what's, what's good is you're still going to be acuting and still going to be teaching and helping to mentor the next generation of political leadership. And I know We'll still have those pithy quotes out there that'll make us laugh and cringe and cry, uh, but that's good. We want us. We want to see the collection of Museo quips to be, you know, compiled, oh, and, and that, oh, that that will oh, be a volume. Oh, Amazon will go right to oh, the top. Yeah, right oh yeah. Right to the top. Yeah. Number three hundred twelve thousand one hundred six. Hey, Trump is going to give you a lot of good oh, material. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My thanks to Controller Tom DiNapoli for being a terrific guest all these years. Thoughtful patient and informed, and for all his years of service to all New Yorkers. And thank you, CUNY TV's audience, for joining me and my outstanding guests every week for the past 20, 26, 16 years. It felt like 26. It feel, feel like it. <laughs> I've had a blast. I hope you have, too. Thank you. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. 
Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.